Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So first of all, before we do anything else, listen to that audio. Ooh, it's no echoes, no reverberation. I got a new microphone and it works good, doesn't it? I'm very excited about that. So now that we've gotten that out of the way, today's Down and Dirty, we're going to combine the construction world with Bill Nye the Science Guy. Bill, 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 Bill. And yes, that's an odd pairing, but there's a reason we're doing this. Uh, I've been talking with a guy out of Florida. His name is Michael. He just started heavy equipment school. Michael, this one's for you, bud. Um, he asked me the other day how hydraulics work, and it really never occurred to me that there's probably a fair amount of you guys new to the industry that don't really understand the fundamental basics of how a hydraulic system works. So we're gonna tackle that today. And just bear in mind, this is really the fundamental basics. I'm not gonna get into the complexities of a hydraulic system. They are really complex, especially on these larger machines like excavators and stuff, where you've got lots of valve banks, you've got multi-directional flow. I mean, they can get really complex quick. What we're gonna cover is the fundamentals of how that system works and why it works the way that it does. I've actually got some tools today to help me out. So I've got my towel laid down here because I've already made a mess actually putting this whole thing together. But we're going to demonstrate a very basic hydraulic system. So first of all, the term hydraulics, you should know, does not refer to only hydraulic systems like we see on our machines. Hydraulics is really anything having to do with liquids. That's why when you hear about guys talking about dams or water-based structures, you will hear hydraulics thrown around. It's because it's, it has anything to do with liquids and flows. So in our case, we're talking about the flow of hydraulic oil through a machine and how it makes the machine work. We're going to pretend that this side over here is our hydraulic reservoir, and this plunger that I'm going to manually push is going to be our hydraulic pump. We have our hydraulic line going out to our hydraulic cylinder. So, you know, I know this is another syringe, but let's pretend this is the rod coming out of the end of the cylinder. This is the cylinder body itself. So what happens, and I know you already know what's going to happen, but when I apply a force and pump this liquid through my hydraulic line, the hydraulic oil only has one place to go, and it's by pushing this plunger out. And sure enough, when I start to apply force, you see that plunger, let me make sure in the camera you can see it good, that plunger moves out. Well, if you can imagine we had a bucket or something attached to this end, it's gonna cause that bucket to move. It's gonna cause the stick to move in and out. So that's the basics of what's going on inside of a hydraulic cylinder. Now, where this differs is in order for me to get this to retract, I actually have to suck the hydraulic, excuse me, I have to suck the hydraulic oil back through the plunger. In a real hydraulic system, you don't suck hydraulic oil. What happens is, let me push the plunger halfway, what actually happens in a real hydraulic system is, you can imagine there's a split here in the line, and we had another line going up to this side of the plunger. And imagine that this was entirely closed off. Instead of sucking hydraulic oil back through your hydraulic line, what happens is the pump actually pumps on this side of the plunger and it pushes the plunger back down. So you're actually forcing the rod to go back into the cylinder body. So that's the main difference between how a hydraulic system on an excavator works versus this little simple model here. But the effect is still the same. When we pump hydraulic oil through this line, it's going to cause the plunger to move out and that will apply work to whatever we're trying to get done. So that's the basics of a very simple hydraulic system. But we get pretty complex on these machines, don't we? Well, I have a surprise. I have a more complex system. I know, shocking, isn't it? So what we've got here is a series of valves that I can manually open and close. And we have it attached to, let me make sure everything's in focus here and in the picture, and we have four separate cylinders. So right now you can see that we've got liquid in all of our cylinders out on the machine. And you may remember from my excavator tips and tricks, which if you haven't watched that, click up here on the link so that you can actually know what I'm talking about. But remember, when I talked about checking the hydraulic oil level on an excavator, one of the most important things was making sure the machine was in the right position. This is why. You can see that my hydraulic tank is totally empty of hydraulic oil in this situation, because the hydraulic oil is all out in the system. 
if we had a sticker in our machine that said, hey, you need to check it when all of your cylinders are extended and the hydraulic oil level's way down here on your tank, we're in good shape. Now, what you're gonna notice, I'm gonna start pulling on this, I'm gonna start pumping our hydraulic oil back into the machine, what's happening to our plungers. If you can see that, they're all starting to suck in. So let's go with that position right there. This is probably a more realistic look at what it would be to check the hydraulic oil level on an excavator. So maybe we've got our stick cylinder that's about halfway out like this, but all of our other cylinders are retracted, which means that we have accounted for this oil here not being in the hydraulic tank when we go and check our hydraulic oil level. And sure enough, we've got our sight glass, we got hydraulic oil there, we're good to go for the day. So just a quick side note, that's why it's important to make sure you check hydraulic oil levels when the machine is in the position that the manufacturer tells you it needs to be in because they are accounting for this right here. So let's go back to our hydraulic system. So what we've done is we've made a very simple hydraulic system to where now I can make all of the cylinders go out at the same time. And again, in a real world, we would not retract them like I am now by sucking the oil back in. We would actually pump oil to the back side of this piston here and it would drive the cylinder in. And by the way, there is a valve that opens and dumps that oil back into our hydraulic reservoir here. So it's a complete circular system. It's a complete closed system. So what we can do is we can have all of our cylinders working at the same time with all of our valves open. One thing I want you to note, I'm using a lot of hydraulic oil, I'm using a lot of force, but look at how little all of my cylinders are moving because all of this fluid that's running through this line here is getting split between four separate cylinders. That's why when you do multiple movements, especially in an excavator, when you're curling your bucket, you're sticking in, you're booming up and you're turning all at the same time, it doesn't work as fast as it does when you're just sticking in and turning or when you're just turning. And it's because the pump can only output so much hydraulic oil at a time. And if you're splitting that between four, five, six functions, you know, let's say you've got a hammer on there too that's running at the same time you're doing everything, it's all gonna slow down a little bit because you're limited on how much oil can actually run through the system. So the way you get around this is, let's suck our hydraulic oil back in here. If we close a couple of these valves, now I can work this one cylinder with very little effort on my pump's part. So you can see that my pump is not moving that much, but we're getting a lot of action out here on our cylinder. So that's how you can move faster in an excavator and actually increase your efficiency is by trying to limit the number of functions that you're doing at one given time. Now obviously you have to do certain functions at the same time in an excavator to make it dig. But like I talked about in my tips and tricks video, if you're turning back over your pile and you're sticking out and you're putting your bucket, you know, uncurling your bucket and you're booming down all at the same time, it's gonna slow you down. And that's why I talk so much about wasted movements is because of this concept right here. You only have so much flow that can go through the system. So we could open another valve and we're only working two cylinders. It's gonna slow down a little bit, but still we're a lot more efficient than we were by opening all four valves. So another important concept here is limiting the amount of oil that you need. And this is why, in all honesty, this is why hybrid machines in the market are going to be such a game changer. I'm gonna speak about Cabelco excavators just because I used to sell them and I know more about those than the other manufacturers, but there are other manufacturers on the market that are coming out with hybrid machines. But the way Cabelco's machine works is, your swing motors are no longer hydraulically driven. They're driven by an electric motor. So what does that mean? Well, swing motors take a lot of hydraulic oil. You're gonna notice that of all of the functions that you're performing at the same time on an excavator, as soon as you start to swing that machine, it really slows your hydraulics out on the boom and the stick and your bucket. It slows those way down. So on a Cabelco machine, on a hybrid machine, the swing drives are now electric. Now we don't have a hydraulic circuit going to your swing motors, which means that we can swing at full speed while we are also sticking in, booming up, and curling our bucket at full speed. So you can see right there, take the fuel efficiency out when it comes to these new hybrid machines. Take the fuel savings out of the equation. Just from a production standpoint, that is a huge game changer on how many more loads you can put out in a day because you aren't losing that time, that cycle time, bogging your hydraulics down with your swing motors. 
So that's another important concept to realize. Another concept to realize, or at least so that you guys understand these systems a little bit better, uh, these valves I'm manually turning myself. In any machine, these valves are generally controlled one of two ways. You may hear of a pilot system. So when you hear of a backhoe or something along those lines being pilot controls, that is where you actually have a second smaller hydraulic system. It, it still pulls from your regular hydraulic oil, I believe. Don't quote me, I'm not a hydraulics expert, but I believe it still pulls from the same reservoir and everything. But you actually have a smaller set of hydraulics that control these valves. And that system is tied to your joysticks in the cab. So when I but you know, push forward and I boom down on my skid steer or on my excavator or whatever I'm, I'm driving, I actually have a hydraulic line that is going to this valve and it is mechanically opening this valve. That's why pilot controls actually generate a little heat in the cab. If you put your hand down where your controls come out of the console or out of your armrest, you'll actually feel in a pilot control system, there's some heat there and it's heat from the hydraulic system. There's actually hydraulic oil in the cab with you. So that's how a hydraulic system works with pilot controls. The newer style of controls that most guys getting into the industry are gonna be used to are actually what they call EH controls or electronics over hydraulics. Instead of having a pilot control system that's going into the cab, all of your joysticks have sensors in them that detect how far you're pushing the joystick. That electronically communicates to a solenoid, which is just a fancy word for an electronic valve. It communicates to a solenoid and it opens the valve however much the computer deems it needs to. And that's why in EH controls, you can actually go in and adjust sensitivities. You can change how quick the valves respond to what your inputs are. You can't do that on a pilot control system. It's all in how much you are allowing hydraulic oil to move through that system. Versus EH, you can use the computer and actually dial that down. So there are some drawbacks to that system. With an EH system, you lose the feel in the controls. And a lot of old school operators are really used to grading with the feel in the controls themselves. Uh, when I ran loader for a long time, I originally started in a pilot control system and I 100% graded by feel in my controls. When I switched over to the Cat 938, uh, it was a K series that had EH controls. Believe it or not, I had been running loader for about a year and a half at that point, and I had it down pat. I was a, I was a decent operator in the loader. I totally, it took me about four days to totally relearn how to grade in that, in that machine. I no longer had the feel of where that bucket was level and contacting the ground. I had to learn how to get that from my seat. And so it's still doable. You can absolutely learn to grade in one of the new age machines. You're just learning a different way to feel the machine and what you're doing and when you have resistance. You're no longer getting that feedback in your hands like most operators are used to. So that's another system. The third system that's not nearly as common, it's generally reserved for uh, smaller skid steers and stuff like that, is a mechanical valve system. And that is actually you have a linkage that hooks your control arm down to this valve. And so when you push forward, you're physically causing the linkage to lift that up so that that valve can open and allow hydraulic fluid through the system. So again, this is super, super basic, very high level, but it at least allows you to see the basics of how these systems work. There's hydraulic lines running all over these machines and it can get very confusing. Uh, you start getting into complex valves where there's actually three or four valves in one valve body and they all work together. So these systems can get pretty complex pretty quick, but simplifying it all down here, you can see that when you really get to the basics of a hydraulic system, you're just squirting water and making things move. That's all it is. Except we don't use water, we use hydraulic oil so that it doesn't get hot enough to boil and you don't have the weird compression issues that you have with water. So that's a whole other topic of science. Science rules. For down the road. So anyway, I know this is a pretty complex topic that I have drilled down into super simple terms. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask away and then if I don't know any answers, I will go hunt them down for you because that's what I do. So I hope this has been helpful. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one, guys.